tell you right now, 10 times PRCA Bullfighter of the Year. The most decorated bullfighter in the history of professional rodeo. And he calls for the TC Wyoming home. How about Mr. Dusty Tuckman? Dusty has ice water running through his veins. He's got the instincts, he's got the courage, he's got the physical fitness, he's got the athleticism. He's as good as they come. That Dusty, when he wakes up in the morning, he's thinking bullfighting. When he eats lunch, he's thinking bullfighting. He loves what he does more than anyone I've ever seen. You know, this game of rodeo, you know, it's like playing with fire. You do it long enough, you'll get burnt. It's not too bad, really. I figured it'd be a lot colder. No, no, it's uh, not bad. God is good, man. I'd like to try that over there if you want. Yeah. I think it looks we'll pretty see. good. All right. Tuck. Dusty showed interest in rodeo at a very young age. He was five or six, I think, when he rode his first steer, and when he fell off, he fell off on his arm. And the doctor said, yes, it's broke, it's a clean break, but I'm gonna have to yank his arm to put it back in place. And I thought, oh dear. So I was hanging on to his hand, and when he pulled Dusty's arm, tears come to Dusty's eyes. And then he just looked at me and he just said, cowboys have to be tough, mom. When people think about bullfighters, you know, at a rodeo, they usually think the rodeo clowns. Now, rodeo bullfighters are not clowns. They're extremely athletic, they are not funny. Bullfighters are cowboy protection specialists. They take care of the cowboy. As a rodeo clown, my main job is entertainment, while their main job is to take care of the cowboys. One bullfighter will always cover what we call the gap, and that's the distance between the bull and the bull rider. You'll see a lot of bullfighters hit the gap, but they go so fast the bull will see them and then come back to the bull rider. And Tuck, he gets in that gap and then he slows down. That bull follows Tuck every time. It could be the meanest bull ever. I get on a grizzly bear if Dusty's out there and still smile about it because I know he's going to jump in front of him and do whatever he can to save me. He just knows how to handle every single situation and he'll take a hook in for anybody. What does it take to have that mentality? Uh, a big set of balls, really. That's, that's what it takes. People call Dusty the GOAT. That's the acronym for greatest of all time. Nine straight Bullfighter of the Year awards. It's kind of hard to argue with. He is by far the greatest to ever strap on a pair of cleats. I mean, every bullfighter coming up wants to be just like Dusty Tugness or better than Dusty Tugness. And, uh, I mean, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, they throw the, the GOAT term around every once in a while. You know, it's a blessing for people to uh, think that of me. I'm thankful for it. But at the end of the day, you know, I know I've got a job to do and I, I'm going to keep working on being consistent and try to stay focused. Uh, I don't necessarily get wrapped up in all the hype on stuff. You know, I'm just a kid pursuing a dream. So about 10 and a half, 11 months out of the year, I'm traveling. I'm on the road uh, from northeast, south, and west, kind of all over. We put on a lot of miles and a lot of windshield time. My days kind of look pretty similar all year round. A lot of times I get up, uh, get some good word in me, and get a good breakfast. Kind of find myself to a gym. I'm an outdoors kind of person, so if it involves sporting of some sort or the other, I'll venture off and do that, or just kind of kick my feet up and take in the sights and get ready for that nice performance. You know, I look at Tuck more of a family member than I do a friend. I know that Dusty's got my back both in and out of the arena, and he knows that I've got his. And there comes a certain point of time when we're getting ready that it's time to kind of shut out the outside world. And so you can see where that switch happens with Dusty. And it's time to focus on the task at hand. As soon as that latch cracks and that bull comes out of the chute, I mean, it's kind of a moment of stillness. You're reading the book in front of you before it really unfolds. 
every jump that bull makes, you try to put yourself in position so when that whistle blows or that bull rider hits the ground that you can be there to take that bull away from him. And then from there, you know, we're on to the next one. I mean, there's not a better feeling in the world. Tarkus, world champ. Dusty changed the sport, the whole bullfighting sport in general. He came in and everybody thought he was just this crazy guy wanting to get hooked. That bull just gave Dusty Tuck as a little nudge in the shorts. And literally everything the guys are doing now, he started it. I got a autograph from Dusty. It was actually um, exciting for me because I never got pretty much an autograph from a real, real pro athlete. There are a lot of reasons people come to a rodeo. I think people love sports because of the, oh my God, I can't believe you just did that moment. You know, we all grew up at one point or another in our lives, we wanted to be a cowboy. We wanted to be a cowgirl. And rodeo gives them that opportunity for a couple of hours. Most of us wouldn't have what it takes. What these guys do, the moves that they make, that simple little step to run in between a guy and a mad 16, 1800 pound bucking bull, that's exceptional.